Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. David Hooper, and this is the Unstoppable Introvert Project. And I am so pleased that you're joining me today for five ways to develop incredible communication skills just for you, for introverts everywhere, because I think this is one of the things that we either struggle with or see is an incredible opportunity to thrive in. So I'm really excited for this one because one of the things I get all the time is I can't believe you're an introvert because of the way I speak and or, or the confidence I have when it comes to communication, whether that's public speaking or contributions or networking, building relationships, that sort of thing. I definitely think I can communicate effectively. So I'm really excited to get into this because I think this is a, a, something that a lot of introverts struggle with, not necessarily because they're introverts, but more because they're shy or they are lacking in confidence or they have social anxiety because those three things aren't traits of introversion. So remember, being an introvert relates more to how you like to recharge your batteries and where you get your energy from. Just because you're shy doesn't mean you're an introvert and just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you're shy. So we need to understand the limitations that we're placing on ourselves and we need to be able to overcome them as well. So yeah, really excited for this one. And I've got some practical tools for you as well, some personal examples of how I've overcame some of those things, shyness, lacking in confidence, um, not doing well when there's lots of attention on you, that type of thing. So yeah, it should should be a good one. And yeah, let's uh, let's figure this thing out. How's your week going as well though? I always like to do these check-ins, even if it's just that one minute a week where you do have a little think about your progress. How are you liking the episodes as well? I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a message. Go on to the DMs, Instagram me, at Dr. David Hooper. That's probably the easiest way to get in touch. And yeah, I'd love to hear from you. And if there's anything you want me to cover. But what I did a week or two ago, I planned out the rest of the 100 episodes. How mad's that? So this is episode 40, I think, if I've got my dates right, <clears throat> which is a huge milestone. And it takes us almost to the halfway mark, which is pretty cool. So 40 episodes in, 60 to go. I've got a ton of guests who are all lined up to come speak to you. They're industry leaders, they're coaches, they're influencers, they're business owners. They're some really awesome, knowledgeable people. So, so much to come in the second half of this campaign. But for now, let's sit back, relax, get a cup of coffee made, and let's get into how you can really communicate effectively as an introvert. Let's go. I'll start with a question though. Have you ever felt misunderstood or struggled to get your point across? I think every introvert in the world, at some stage or another, has had that exact thing. And imagine if you could transform your communication skills and connect with others on a deeper level. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. In today's episode, we're diving into the art of effective communication and it can un how it can unlock new opportunities in your personal and professional life. Because being, I, I talk a lot about professional, I think, prof the professional sides of things, whether it's starting a business or developing in your career or, you know, whatever. But being an amazing communicator is also transformational for your personal relationships. If you start to have a conversation around things you're struggling with or things that you need help with or, you know, just, just how your relationship is going, the good, the bad, the ugly. That open dialogue leads you to developing this stronger bond and 
having that open line of communication in your relationship is is so so good and that's something that you know Laura and I have worked on a lot I think as part of these 100 episodes we might do like a relationship one maybe not like me and Laura together but I'll talk to you from my side of the relationship and what my thoughts are when it comes to effective relationships because we are we're approaching 10 years of marriage which is is pretty cool and absolute nerd alert we just booked to go to New Zealand for our 10th wedding 10th wedding anniversary celebrations and we're going to be doing a tour of both of the islands so New Zealand's actually two islands connected I think by like a bridge or a tiny bit of land. We haven't looked into it that much, but we're going to be doing a full tour of like the whole of New Zealand. But the nerdy bit is, it is alongside like the Lord of the Rings stuff that they filmed over there. So, you know, Laura and I both like Lord of the Rings. We're quite nerdy and we're going to go and around going to go around middle earth and see where they filmed all of the different things and yeah explore the whole of new zealand while we're doing it as well so not sure how i got onto that but i wanted to tell you guys anyway because we've literally just booked it so uh, that's actually going to be in 2026 it was booked up until december 2026 but um yeah two and a half years to go for that one but it's exciting nonetheless and I, yeah, I apologize. I don't know how I got onto that. Um, so yeah, welcome to the show, guys. Welcome. Let's get into this because I want you to feel empowered and I want you to unleash your full potential and, of course, achieve your unstoppable greatness because that's what this show is all about. But if I'm being honest, you're going to struggle to do that without effective communication in a lot of ways because whether it's standing out in your current job and contributing effectively in meetings and speaking publicly, that type of thing? Or is it that you've got this big interview for a high paying, high, highly executive senior role that you're gonna have to perform, maybe do a presentation and then an interview for? Or is it that you are starting a business, you're networking, you're trying to get funding, you're trying to get new clients, that sort of thing. Whatever it is, it's important. <laughs> So we're going to discuss the principles of clear, impactful communication and provide you with the practical strategies to enhance your interactions with others, whether it's that personal relationship, like I've mentioned, or the professional effective communication. It is key to building those strong connections and achieving your goals. But I've got lots of examples of good communication but i've also got lots of examples of poor communication as well i've got a couple that stand out one of my big learning moments was a failed job interview that i did so when i was 24 i got an interview for something called a graduate tutor at a university and if you imagine what a lecturer is it's basically the level below that so like quite a big job for a 24 year old and it was going to be doing lecturing, doing a PhD in research as well, and yeah, basically combining the two. So I thought initially, like, well, I'm surprised I've got interview, an interview for this, because I felt at the time it was probably out of my league, probably a couple of years too early. But anyway, I, I got myself sorted and I went to the interview and it did not go well. I don't, I don't know if I've mentioned this story before, but I was in the interview and I got asked these questions and I just didn't know how to respond. I had no structure to what I was saying. I wasn't bringing anything to life with personal examples. I was stuttering. I was erming and ahhing and I was incredibly nervous. And my, I didn't get that job, unsurprisingly. And I remember coming out of that interview and I was so shaken, I went back to the car and I, I called my dad and I just I cried in the car on the phone to him. And it was an awful experience. And it wasn't that the interviewers were, were awful to me or anything like that. It was just my 
inability to communicate effectively and to, to prepare effectively, I reckon. But what I did do was give me the nudge I need to go and, and learn about effective communication, whether it is structuring interview responses or widening my vocabulary or learning how to avoid using fillers like um and ah. Uh. So it, I can reframe that terrible experience as a, as a positive one because I've learned so much from it. And now I look forward to things like interviews and presentations and public speaking events because I have developed my, my communication skills. So that is a, a really negative experience turned a positive experience. And I'm sure you've got your own as well, where you've just been in those meetings where people just aren't getting what you're saying or you've done a presentation and your points just aren't landing and you think, oh, this is, this is awful. But the other side to it as well is that, that social anxiety part where, I, again, I have a, had a situation a few weeks ago where I had to introduce myself to the whole group. It was kind of like a go around in the circle and introduce each other, that type of thing. A, they said, introduce who you are and what your job was. And a mundane fact from the night before, there was about 20 people in the room and it, I was last to go, which I always prefer to go first, but I was last to go. And yeah, my heart was racing. You know, I had to say just my name, my job and a mundane fact. And, and I, I can do that very well now, but I was sweating, you know, I was anxious, I was nervous, all because of a bit of spotlight that was put on me. And just to reiterate, that isn't necessarily to do with your introversion. Instead, that is actually social anxiety and your lack of confidence or your shyness coming through. So yeah, things we can work on though, which is, is all good. But before I tell you how I personally deal with those kind of situations, let's get into effective communication in a little bit more detail because it's, it's more than just an exchanging of information. It's about understanding emotions and intentions behind the information. It's about connecting with others in a meaningful way because mastering this skill can really stand you out, help you stand apart from others. And it can really help you achieve some of those goals. Because if you are progressing in your job uh, into a line management position or a head of department position, or you're, you're pitching for grant money or trying to network with people, if you're unable to communicate effectively, those things just aren't going to happen. So I think we all probably are aware of the importance of this. I think we've also got to acknowledge in our lives that it doesn't necessarily mean talking a lot. So I'm really concise when I talk, especially in team meetings. I like to get to the point and get the hell out of there. And others, it seems like the sound of their own voice and they over talk. They talk and talk and talk, but never get to the point. Just because you talk a lot doesn't mean you have good communication skills. In fact, it's the opposite. Um, you know, funnily enough, another little tangent. I was in a 90 minute meeting the other day where it was a meeting about a meeting. The meeting was about how often should we meet and how long for and how regularly. Absolute ludicrous, especially when all of the information could have just been emailed to everybody. But I'm going to save that gripe for another day. Uh, let's get back into this. So why is effective communication important? It be builds trust. It resolves conflict. It fosters those better relationships that we're striving for. So when you communicate effectively, you can express your ideas clearly, influence others, and you know, make a really lasting impact. We've probably all had those moments where, one, we've seen those people who over talk and you think, can you be quiet? Like, come on, 
get to your point and it's a negative feeling, we've also probably seen the other side of that where you see an excellent communicator get to the point, are impactful, are motivated to talk to you and it's a really great experience and you come away thinking, yeah, that was a really good conversation. So I've got five points that are going to help you develop into an incredible communicator. And the first is active listening. So this is the foundation of effective communication. It's not just about hearing the words. It's about truly understanding the message that's being conveyed to you. This means paying full attention, asking clarifying questions, and showing empathy. And what that means is <clears throat> looking directly at someone when they're talking, maybe making notes, nodding along, agreeing or disagreeing with them. And if you're able to do that, you're going to get a much better understanding of what the conversation's about, where you might be able to contribute to the conversation. And that in itself will give you the confidence to contribute. So I've been in many, many a meeting where I haven't necessarily been nodding along and paying that much attention. And then when there's an opportunity to ask questions or contribute, you then don't have the confidence to, to contribute. So it's that, that kind of full process. If you're actively listening at the start, by the time it comes for your turn to contribute, then you're going to feel a lot more confident doing it. But make notes, you know, something that's hilarious is uh, on TikTok where it's got somebody making a phone call. They say it's an introvert, but it's more like a socially anxious person. And they're making a call and they've written out like a full script of what to say on the phone. And in the TikTok video, they still get it wrong. But they write a script out of exactly what they're going to say. It's like, hi, it's David from upstairs. I just want to order room service. It's that type of thing. And do the same when you're in your, your meeting or your presentation. You, know, you can script it out while you're there or put a few bullet points around what you're going to, to, to contribute. Because I think something that introverts do make or do struggle with sometimes is thinking quickly on the spot and being able to give a response as soon as it's asked now it's actually a sign of bad management if that happens in your team meeting there should be all sorts of different support mechanisms for introverts to be able to contribute in team meetings such as one-on-one -on -one conversations or going off into little break groups or going away for half an hour and coming back with ideas or being asked to prepare something before the meeting. You should never just be put on the spot to contribute like that. Engaging and being fully active while somebody else is talking will change the game for you on that one. Make those bullet points. And then when it comes to your time to shine, you're gonna feel a lot more confident with the content in how you might be able to contribute. Number two is clarity and conciseness. I've, and I've mentioned this very briefly in my own view. Being clear and concise ensures that your message is going to be understood. Avoid jargon and overly complex sentences. Instead, aim for simplicity and directness. This makes your communication more impactful and easier to follow. And this is something I think just about everybody I've ever met, especially in the HE sector, really struggles with clarity and conciseness. Man, oh man, I've been in some meetings where, I mean, I've already mentioned the conciseness where people talk and talk and talk. And then halfway through, you're thinking, what, what are you actually saying? What's the point of this conversation? And then there's the other side of things where you have meetings and it comes to the end of a 90 minute meeting and you think, what are our key takeaway messages here? And there are none.
because there was no clarity in anybody's points. It's like you just talked for 90 minutes. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So if you're the person who is straight to the point, has a load of clarity in what they're saying and is concise, you're going to stand out. And this is one of the things that I certainly use when it comes to my contributions and to standing out. I can be quite blunt. You know, I got asked for my opinion that the other day and I had nothing additional to answer. So I said, I've got nothing additional to, to, to contribute at this time. And people aren't expecting that. People think everyone always has something to say, but I'm certainly comfortable enough to go, you know what, everything's been said. Can we just get on and let's take some actions here? It's those people who have to contribute and you can hear them as well. You can listen for them because they're the people who just reword exactly what's already been said. And what that displays is that they actually are pretty vulnerable and they aren't comfortable not contributing. And that's just somewhere we, we definitely don't want to be. So, you know, being blunt and being to the point, in my opinion, is, is pretty, pretty, pretty good. And then when it comes to your actual contributions, you want to get to the point as quickly as possible. You want to show your worth. There is a method called the STAR method that you could use. It's, it's used quite commonly in interviews where you'd say, what was the situation that you were in? What was the task that you were faced with? What was the actions that you then deployed? And what was the result of whatever you did or reflections? And that method is like bang, 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 bang. That's my point. This is the structure of what happened. Let's crack on. Has anyone got any questions? So having that structure allows you to, to stand out as well. So the second one, clarity and conciseness. The third one is nonverbal communications. Your body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice all contribute to your message. Nonverbal cues can sometimes speak louder than, than verbal cues. Be mindful of your posture, eye contact, gestures. We kind of touched on a little bit already as they can reinforce or undermine your spoken words. So something that I find is when I'm in these long meetings, I'm, I slouch down, I slide down the chair, mainly because I, I'm losing the will to live. But if I want to engage with somebody during a talk, or I, I'm trying to be respectful of that person, because yeah, not all meetings are bad, and some are, are decent. If they're short and concise and to the point, I'll happily attend. If it's over 20 to 30 minutes, then there's no, no real point in having that meeting, in my opinion. But that's a, a conversation for a different day. Um, those nonverbal cues, it's like you're sitting upright, you're focused and looking at that person. Maybe you're making notes, you're nodding along, you're agreeing with them or, or acknowledging them at least. And you are having that monologue where you're having that situation where you are clearly engaged in what someone is saying. And that is a great way for introverts to stand out. Because if you look around the room, people will be on their phones, people will be on their laptops sending emails, I'd, I'd imagine. People won't be engaged. I've, I've been there and I've seen all of this. It was a shock to the system, actually. So when I joined my team and we had a meeting, I went to the meeting with a notepad and pen. Everybody else went with a laptop. And during the meeting, they were just emailing people and not listening to the speakers. And I was shocked, actually. I was like, what's going on here? And there wasn't any leadership uh, either that said, put your laptops away. It just kind of happened. And yeah, it was a real, really weird situation. But what I was able to do was leverage that opportunity and acknowledge the speakers and ask questions and start to show that I'm a highly engaged employee. So you're able to use those things to your advantage. Number four, emotional intelligence. Understanding and managing your own emotions, as well as recognizing and influencing the emotions of others, is really critical. 
High emotional intelligence allows you to navigate conversations with empathy, build stronger connections as well, and to show that you are really taking an interest in that person. Emotional intelligence is one of the highest forms of intelligence to just be aware of how others are feeling. Are they nervous? Are they excited? Is it a happy subject? Is it a a more negative subject? And it is something that you should be really prioritizing. Just being aware of others' feelings. It sounds so straightforward, doesn't it? But you'd be surprised when people are rude, aren't paying attention, aren't empathetic to the situation, and instead are just in that spot, that space where they aren't listening. And that that really is a gap for us as introverts to fill when it comes to standing out. The last one is feedback and adaptability. And this is where effective communicators are open to feedback on our, and are willing to adapt their approach. This means being receptive to others, uh, others' perspectives and thoughts, and adjusting your communication style to fit the context and the audience. So let me give you an example of something that I used to do in the early stages when I used to present lectures and public talks, that sort of thing. I would always open with a joke. And a lot of the time these were off the cuff and not funny. Um, and it sometimes a little bit awkward as well, but I used to do that as a self defense mechanism to protect myself, which, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite amusing thinking back to that. And it wasn't until my line manager, a really senior member of the department came up to me and said, why do you keep starting with a joke? There's, there's no need to just go straight into the content. People want to hear from you. They value what you say. There's no need to do the joke because it uh, is, yeah, it isn't, it just isn't needed. You don't need it. You don't need to protect yourself. And from then that day, I accepted that actually, you know what? I can communicate really well. I can do great lectures. I can publicly speak really well. You know, to be completely truthful, I'd love to have a bit of a career on stage and to be a public speaker and or a keynote speaker, motivational speaker, that type of thing, and inspire loads of others. And I had to accept that as well. So yeah, if you're in that space where you can't accept criticism, you just won't progress. Or, or at least be open to hearing the feedback and then choosing whether or not you want to accept it. That's absolutely fine too. You can say, well, I don't really agree with that. That's absolutely fine. But for me, I'd been doing these awkward introduction, these jokes to protect myself. And I knew that this was something that, that had to change. And it was, and it, and it has, thankfully. I mean, it's been 10 years since that conversation. And I, I haven't opened with a joke since. So yeah, hopefully that is useful for you and helpful. And yeah, you can be in a position to go and crush your, your next public speaking gig. So just to kind of pull this all together, a couple of things to take away. The first is that practice active listening. Be that person who is engaged, nodding, making eye contact, repeating back what you've heard or asking questions. And this will not only validate the speaker, but also it will help you retain the information. Next one is be clear and direct. Before speaking, think about what you want to say and how to say it most effectively. Avoid those filler words like um and ah oh, and get straight to the point. This clarity will prevent misunderstanding and just show that you're an effective communicator. Remember to use things like bullet points or little notes to yourself, little scripts, to help convey the message. I've been there, sometimes your mind just goes blank because of the pressure and you are unable to contribute because of 
that, that mind fog that you might have. Number three, use positive body language. So pay attention to your body language. Stand up uh, or sit up straight rather, maintain eye contact and use those open gestures as well. And this is gonna convey confidence and openness. Number four is develop emotional intelligence like we've talked about. Practice empathy by putting yourself in the other person's shoes and this is going to help you respond more thoughtfully and build rapport with whoever you are empathizing with. And lastly, seek feedback and reflect. It can be a tricky one, that's for sure. But ask for feedback from trusted friends or colleagues on how you communicate or how you present or how you do interviews or, or how you lecture, whatever it is. Reflect on your conversations and think about what went well and what could be improved. This ongoing reflection is going to help you grow and develop and improve, and you're going to be taking steps towards greatness. I hope that these key components of effective communication have helped. By focusing on those areas that I've mentioned, you can really enhance your interactions and build those stronger relationships. I think this is a really great opportunity for introverts to stand out and to really become the go-to person when it comes to certain topics and certain interactions. So I really encourage you to start implementing these strategies in your daily life. Your journey could inspire others to improve their communication skills as well. Just want to say thank you so much again for watching and or for listening. Your support really means the world for me. We have just hit 40 episodes launched and we've got 60 to go in the rest of 2024. We are making huge strides towards that massive, massive goal that seems so, so unattainable at the start of the year. But we're progressing, we're getting after it, we're on it. And I couldn't be doing it without the support that I'm getting from you guys. It's so, so appreciated. So remember, introversion isn't the thing that will hold you back. It is the thing that will catapult you towards your unbreakable, unstoppable self. Until next time, stay unstoppable. Stay unstoppable.